this match, the first man to put his opponent inside the casket will be declared the winner. These videos are satiric reviews. You don't have to agree, but don't bitch about it. Hey there, I'm Social Injustice Warrior, Vin Fuso. And today, I'm joined by... Hey, what's up, guys? It's the professor here from the Wrestling Information Council, or the WIC, coming at you with my review of WrestleMania 22, The Undertaker vs. Mark Henry, Inside of a Casket. And I gotta be honest with you, this is actually my first time watching this match. Mostly because I never had high expectations of it. Was I right? Well, I guess we'll find out. The story going into this match was strange. Even for The Undertaker. Because it was spun from Undertaker's rivalry with Muhammad Hassan. And his manager at the time, Davari. But after Hassan was written off TV, also thanks to The Undertaker, Davari reappeared at the side of Mark Henry. Looking to have the big man do his bidding. Mark Henry is being built up as this massive creature, okay, this unstoppable force. What better way to build up Mark Henry than to put him in a match against The Undertaker? This phenom, this legend with this already legendary streak. Okay, so before we even start the match, Henry has no real beef with The Undertaker. I mean, he's just a pawn in this feud, which doesn't really necessarily shout mania feud or streak worthy. At least both Muhammad Hassan and Davari hated the dead man. I mean, that feud could have at least been a contender for a Mania match. This pairing of Davari and Henry was far too new for anyone to care. On top of that, on top of that, on top of that. Davari was the manager. He was the mouthpiece for Mark Henry. About a week or so prior to WrestleMania, Undertaker attacks Davari, tombstones him onto a casket. He's a moot point going into this match. Undertaker took out Davari before the match. So the guy who's actually feuding with The Undertaker isn't even included in any fashion whatsoever. So great. Fantastic. He doesn't come out with Mark Henry. Uh, he doesn't interfere on Mark Henry's behalf. He's barely mentioned. They mention him on commentary just for Michael Cole to recount and recap. On top of that, on top of that, on top of that, on top of that. Did anyone really think Mark Henry was going to take the streak? Like, really? Like, anybody? Was anybody like, oh, man, this is this is the year, man. This is the year taker. It ends. It's got to end. I mean, he's facing Mark Henry. It's sexual, baby. And I want to give it all to you. Big Show, King Kong Bundy, Giant Gonzalez, A-Train, all these big, big, massive people. Well, Mark Henry's big, Mark Henry's massive, Mark Henry's never lost to The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Those guys have. A month prior to WrestleMania 22, Undertaker has a World Heavyweight Championship match on SmackDown against current champion Kurt Angle. Taker's all but won the match, he's all but won the title, when the world's strongest man, Mark Henry, comes out and attacks The Undertaker. He won the match, but not the title. He challenges Mark Henry to a casket match at WrestleMania 22. Now, why a casket match? Because WrestleMania 22 is the WrestleMania where WWE forgot that rules existed. The match was a casket match. Why? For what reason? Their non-issues were hardly severe enough to warrant this type of match. I mean, that's pretty major. A casket match is like the end of a, of a, of a well-told rivalry, or, you know, like, th there's got to be something there to lead to a casket match. You don't just go, oh, you know what? Casket match. Like, you don't see that. Was this an attempt from the people in the back to get the fans to give a fuck? Almost every match has some kind of stipulation to it. We have the Money in the Bank ladder match. We have a hardcore match. We have a no-holds-barred no match. We have a, launch, a Playboy lingerie pillow fight match. We have a triple threat match, which in and of itself has no rules. There's no disqualifications, no countouts. So we needed some kind of a gimmick to really elevate this. And there is the object that will be used to end this match up here tonight. And to put him in one of the Undertaker's specialty matches, right? He's got three of them. He's got the Hell in a Cell, he's got the Barrier Alive, he's got the Casket match. Those are the Undertaker's specialty matches. Put Mark Henry in the Undertaker's specialty match that would be hardest for the Undertaker to beat Mark Henry in, which is a Casket match. Because how are you going to put a 400-pound man that's this wide? How are you going to get him into a Casket? Even the entrances of both men in this match are bland. Neither one emotes. They both just look like they're on autopilot. 
Like, I could see it in their eyes as they're coming to the ring. They're just thinking, oh, let's, let's make this quick. Let's get this over with already. And it's WrestleMania. Now that he's a little bit older, or a lot a bit older, um, the spectacle is more in his entrance. People watch WrestleMania more to see his, his entrance. Okay, and how long his entrance is going to be. That's kind of the, the running gag now is how long is The Undertaker's entrance. Three minutes and we're out of here. The clock is ticking and we're in the clear. We got three minutes and we're out of here. Henry starts off the match by attacking Undertaker prematurely. Though it's his own fault. I mean, who turns their back on an opponent in a fight? You know what? For a UFC fan, Undertaker, you seem to neglect their strategies. Henry takes the lead, dominating early on. And you know what? I gotta give it to him. Henry put his work boots on tonight. And Taker, to his credit, is really selling what a threat Henry is as well. While this isn't much more than a brawl, it's a surprisingly competent one. Undertaker begins to make a comeback from the would-be silverback, and that's not a racial comment either, by the way. I'm sorry if you thought so, but that was actually almost his nickname at one point. And it's just a matter of time before one of those faces come eye to eye. With the silver back. But then it wasn't. And that's probably because it might have it might have been taken as a racial comment. So let's just let's just move past all of that together. Let's just forget I said anything. Taker goes for old school, only to be cut off by the shockingly strongly booked Mark Henry. Because That's what I do. These are the performances I always wanted to see out of Henry, but almost never did until much later on in his career. Taker is selling more for Mark Henry than he would be at a later WrestleMania for Brock Lesnar. And he allegedly had a concussion during that match. He's selling for Mark more than he was selling for that concussion. Henry tries to push the dead man in the casket. And I'm using that word pretty liberally here, alright? Because he's doing everything but physically pushing or rolling him into that casket. You know, Mark, I, I can't help but feel like you're making this whole process a lot harder than it needs to be. All right, you just you're adding more steps. All right, you want to get up that flight of stairs already. The phenom does eventually show signs of life, finally managing to hit his old school successfully before the owner of the Hall of Pain immediately fights back. What's really interesting here is how much offense Henry gets in. I mean, he's almost shown to be Taker's greatest threat yet. Undertaker gets little to no offense in for about eight minutes. Mark Henry does not leave his feet for about the first eight minutes of the match. Everything that Undertaker throws at Mark Henry, Mark Henry has an answer for. And Taker has yet to get the big guy off his feet. And this is with him using diving clotheslines and using old school off the top rope. Henry eventually accidentally dives into the casket, with Taker trying to beat him down and close the lid. Henry grabs the keeper of the streak and brings him into the coffin, and the two trade hits until Henry gets the better of the man from the dark side, trying to give him what looks to be the Jimmy Savile maneuver. Yeah, they don't teach you that in wrestling school, though. Taker fights back, causing Henry to roll back into the ring, with the former biker following behind. Henry again fights back, slamming Taker and going for the pinfall. Now in this match, the first man to put his opponent inside the casket will be declared the winner. Which is almost as bad as Macho Man going for a pin during the Royal Rumble. Almost, but, but not quite. Henry, realizing his mistake, went back to trying to roll him into the casket and managed to do so successfully. But Taker remains on his feet, bringing the fight back to the world's strongest man. Eventually, Mark positioned himself on the ropes, which was a... Dead giveaway. Dead Charles, giveaway. Charles, thank you very Dead much. Dead giveaway. Undertaker scoops him up and hits a modified turnbuckle powerbomb. Now, Taz correctly calls it as a modified turnbuckle powerbomb. Michael Cole, however, insists that it's the last ride. And we have to remember that the commentators, Michael Cole especially, has Vince, have Vince in their ear. So Michael Cole has Vince in his ear telling him, call it the last ride, call it the last ride, call it the last ride. Taker hits what is probably the worst looking last ride of all time before carelessly tossing him into the closed casket below. And hey, didn't you nearly end Shawn Michaels' career with that? I mean, you think that you, you learned the lesson, but, but no, here's Undertaker, still potentially ending careers. Never his own, though. Taker pulls off a pretty impressive suicide dive to the outside, over the casket, and onto the Once Nation of Domination member. Uh, Undertaker does his diving, his suicide dive over the top rope that we don't see anymore because he's old, he's got the health problems, and honestly, I don't really want to see him do it now because I don't want to see the Undertaker die. Both return to the ring where Undertaker hits a tombstone pile driver before rolling him into the casket and shutting the lid, continuing his streak at 14-0. And that's it? 
I mean, uh, don't don't get me wrong. I like the match a lot more than I anticipated, but that's it. That's all. That's how you're going to finish it. Call it a day? Really? It seemed like this was about to get really good, but it never got the opportunity to. It was a fairly short affair that didn't feel all that competitive. It felt like Henry dominated most of the match, with Undertaker only managing to get a comeback at the ass end of it. Taker goes on to continue his streak, and Davari would continue on with his feud with the Dead Man, replacing Mark Henry with the Great Khali. And if there's any silver lining to this dark cloud, it's that I don't have to sit through another one of those matches. Thank God. With that being said, I want to thank my guest for joining me today, and I want to thank all y'all for joining me as well. And if you like the series, let me know in the comment below. This has been made months in advance, so you might actually hate this entire series. I, I might have uploaded all of this for nothing. But I guess if WWE could take a chance with booking Mark Henry and The Undertaker at WrestleMania, then I can take a chance on making a couple Undertaker videos. So with that being said, I'm the Social Injustice Warrior V Infuso, and if you like the words that came out of my mouth hole and you too want to become a VTard, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's plenty more where this video came from. Follow me on Twitter because, hell, why not? It's not considered stalking if it's on the internet, am I right? And don't forget to join the Discord. I don't have anything catchy to add to that, but just, j just join it. Just go, go do it. And if you have a free moment of time and a free dollar to spare, then head over to my Patreon, where for just one buck, you too could help keep this boat afloat. And if you don't have that dollar, but you do have a free moment of time, then hit the share button. It will help me out tremendously. Vitart, oh.